Financial Economics, Wikipedia Audio Financial economics is the branch of economics characterized by a concentration on monetary activities, in which money of one type or another is likely to appear on both sides of a trade. Its concern is thus the interrelation of financial variables, such as prices, interest rates, and shares, as opposed to those concerning the real economy. It has two main areas of focus, asset pricing and corporate finance, the first being the perspective of providers of capital, i.e. investors, and the second of users of capital. The subject is concerned with the allocation and deployment of economic resources, both spatially and across time, in an uncertain environment. It therefore centers on decision-making under uncertainty in the context of the financial markets, and the resultant economic and financial models and principles, and is concerned with deriving testable or policy implications from acceptable assumptions. It is built on the foundations of microeconomics and decision theory. Financial econometrics is the branch of financial economics that uses econometric techniques to parameterize these relationships. Mathematical finance is related in that it will derive and extend the mathematical or numerical models suggested by financial economics. Note though that the emphasis there is mathematical consistency, as opposed to compatibility with economic theory. Financial economics has a primarily microeconomic focus, whereas monetary economics is primarily macroeconomic in nature. Underlying Economics Financial economics is usually taught at the postgraduate level, see Master of Financial Economics. Recently, specialist undergraduate degrees are offered in the discipline. This article provides an overview and survey of the field, for derivations and more technical discussion, see the specific articles linked. Time Money now is traded for money in the future, uncertainty, the amount of money to be transferred in the future is uncertain, options, one party to the transaction can make a decision at a later time that will affect subsequent transfers of money, information, knowledge of the future can reduce, or possibly eliminate, the uncertainty associated with future monetary value. The New Palgrave Dictionary of Economics also uses the gel codes to classify its entries in V8, subject index, including financial economics at pages 863-64. The below have links to entry abstracts of the New Palgrave online for each primary or secondary gel category. Tertiary category entries can also be searched. As above, the discipline essentially explores how rational investors would apply decision theory to the problem of investment. The subject is thus built on the foundations of microeconomics and decision theory, and derives several key results for the application of decision making under uncertainty to the financial markets. Underlying all of financial economics are the concepts of present value and expectation. Calculating their present value allows the decision maker to aggregate the cash flows to be produced by the asset in the future, to a single value at the date in question, and to thus more readily compare two opportunities, this concept is therefore the starting point for financial decision making. Its history is correspondingly early. Richard Witt discusses compound interest in depth already in 1613, in his book Arithmetical Questions, further developed by Johann de Witt and Edmund Hawley. Roy E. Bailey The Economics of Financial Markets Cambridge University Press ISBN 0521612802 Financial Economics, Risk, and Information 
World Scientific. ISBN 9814355135, Zvi Bodhi, Robert C. Merton and David Cleeton. Financial Economics. Prentice Hall. ISBN 0131856154, James Bradfield. Introduction to the Economics of Financial Markets. Oxford University Press. ISBN 978-0-19-531063-4, Satya R. Chakravarti. An Outline of Financial Economics. Anthem Press. ISBN 1783083360, Jokic Vitanik and Fernando Zapatero. Introduction to the Economics and Mathematics of Financial Markets. MIT Press. ISBN 978-0262033206, George M. Constantinides, Milton Harris, René M. Stoltz. Handbook of the Economics of Finance. Elsevier. ISBN 044. 451-3639 CS1 maint, multiple names, authors list CS1 maint, extra text, authors list, Keith Cuthbertson, Dirk Nish. Quantitative Financial Economics, Stocks, Bonds and Foreign Exchange. Wiley. ISBN 0470091711, Jean-Pierre Danthein, John B. Donaldson. Intermediate Financial Theory. Academic Press. ISBN 0123693802, Louis E. Coud, Christian Galier, Harris Schlesinger. Economic and Financial Decisions Under Risk. Princeton University Press. ISBN 978-0-691-12215-1, Jürgen Eichberger, Ian R. Harper. Financial Economics. Oxford University Press. ISBN 0198775407, Igor F. Stigniv, Torsten Hens, and Klaus Reiner Skankopi. Mathematical Financial Economics, A Basic Introduction. Springer. ISBN 331-916-5704. CS1 maint, Multiple Names, Authors List, Frank J. Fabozzi, Edwin H. Neve and Qua Vujo. Financial Economics. Wiley. ISBN 0470596201, Christian Galier. The Economics of Risk and Time. MIT Press. ISBN 978-0-262-57224-8, Torsten Hens and Mark Oliver Rieger. Financial Economics, A Concise Introduction to Classical and Behavioral Finance Springer ISBN 35403614464, Chi Fu Huang and Robert H. Litzenberger Foundations for Financial Economics Prentice Hall ISBN 0135006538 Jonathan E. Ingersoll. Theory of Financial Decision Making. Roman and Littlefield. ISBN 0847673596, Robert A. Jarrow. Finance Theory. Prentice Hall. ISBN 0133148653, Chris Jones. Financial Economics. Routledge. ISBN 0415375851, Brian Kettle. Economics for Financial Markets. Butterworth Heinemann. 
ISBN 978-0-7506-5384-8, Ivan Langweiler. Micro Foundations of Financial Economics, An Introduction to General Equilibrium Asset Pricing. Princeton University Press. ISBN 0691126313, Stephen F. Leroy, Jan Werner. Principles of Financial Economics Cambridge University Press ISBN 0521586054 Leonard C. McLean, William T. Zimba Handbook of the Fundamentals of Financial Decision Making World Scientific ISBN 9814417343 Frederick S. Mishkin the Economics of Money, Banking, and Financial Markets Prentice Hall ISBN 0132961970 Harry H. Panger, ed. Financial Economics with Applications Actuarial Foundation ISBN 093-895-9484 Extra Text, Authors List, Jeffrey Poitras, ed. Pioneers of Financial Economics, Volume I Edward Elgar Publishing. ISBN 978-1845423810, Volume II ISBN 978-1845423827, Richard Roll. The International Library of Critical Writings in Financial Economics Cheltenham, Edward Elgar Publishing An immediate extension is to combine probabilities with present value, leading to the expected value criterion which sets asset value as a function of the sizes of the expected payouts and the probabilities of their occurrence. These ideas originate with Blaise Pascal and Pierre de Fermat. This decision method, however, fails to consider risk aversion. In other words, since individuals receive greater utility from an extra dollar when they are poor and less utility when comparatively rich, the approach is to therefore adjust the weight assigned to the various outcomes correspondingly. Carry E. Back Asset Pricing and Portfolio Choice Theory Oxford University Press ISBN 0195380614 Tomas Bjork Arbitrage Theory in Continuous Time Oxford University Press ISBN 0199574744X John H. Cochran Asset Pricing Princeton University Press ISBN 0691121370, Daryl Duffy. Dynamic Asset Pricing Theory. Princeton University Press. ISBN 0691090222X, Edwin J. Elton, Martin J. Gruber, Stephen J. Brown, William N. Goatsman. Modern Portfolio Theory and Investment Analysis. Wiley. ISBN 111-846-9941. CS1 maint, Multiple Names, Authors List, Robert A. Haugen. Modern Investment Theory. Prentice Hall. ISBN 0130191701, Mark S. Joshi, Jane M. Patterson. Introduction to Mathematical Portfolio Theory Cambridge University Press ISBN 11070423131 Lutz Krushwitz, Andreas Lerfler Discounted Cash Flow, A Theory of the Valuation of Firms Wiley ISBN 978-0470870440 David Gilwenberger. 
Investment Science Oxford University Press ISBN 0199740089 Harry M. Markowitz Portfolio Selection Efficient Diversification of Investments Wiley ISBN 1557861080 Frank Milne Finance Theory and Asset Pricing Oxford University Press ISBN 0199261075 George Panaki Theory of Asset Pricing Prentice Hall ISBN 0321127202X Mark Rubinstein A History of the Theory of Investments Wiley ISBN 0471770566, William F. Sharp Portfolio Theory in Capital Markets, The Original Edition McGraw-Hill ISBN 0071353208 Present Value, Expectation, and Utility Choice under uncertainty here may then be characterized as the maximization of expected utility. More formally, the resulting expected utility hypothesis states that, if certain axioms are satisfied, the subjective value associated with a gamble by an individual is that individual's statistical expectation of the valuations of the outcomes of that gamble. The impetus for these ideas arise from various inconsistencies observed under the expected value framework, such as the St. Petersburg Paradox. The development here originally due to Daniel Bernoulli, and later formalized by John von Neumann and Oscar Morgenstern. The concepts of arbitrage-free, rational, Pricing and equilibrium are then coupled with the above to derive classical financial economics. Rational pricing is the assumption that asset prices will reflect the arbitrage-free price of the asset, as any deviation from this price will be arbitraged away. This assumption is useful in pricing fixed income securities, particularly bonds, and is fundamental to the pricing of derivative instruments. Economic equilibrium is, in general, a state in which economic forces such as supply and demand are balanced, and, in the absence of external influences these equilibrium values of economic variables will not change. General equilibrium deals with the behavior of supply, demand, and prices in a whole economy with several or many interacting markets by seeking to prove that a set of prices exists that will result in an overall equilibrium. The two concepts are linked as follows, where market prices do not allow for profitable arbitrage, i.e. they comprise an arbitrage-free market, then these prices are also said to constitute an arbitrage equilibrium. Intuitively, this may be seen by considering that where an arbitrage opportunity does exist, then prices can be expected to change, and are therefore not in equilibrium. An arbitrage equilibrium is thus a precondition for a general economic equilibrium. The immediate, and formal, extension of this idea, the fundamental theorem of asset pricing, shows that where markets are as described and are additionally complete one may then make financial decisions by constructing a risk-neutral probability measure corresponding to the market. Arbitrage-free pricing and equilibrium State prices Complete here means that there is a price for every asset in every possible state of the world and that the complete set of possible bets on future states of the world can therefore be constructed with existing assets, essentially solving simultaneously for n probabilities, given n prices. The formal derivation will proceed by arbitrage arguments. For a worked example see rational pricing number risk neutral valuation, where, 
in a simplified environment, the economy has only two possible states up and down and where P and R are the two corresponding probabilities, and in turn, the derived distribution, or measure. Jonathan Burke, Peter DeMarzo Corporate Finance Pearson ISBN 0132992477, Peter Boss Ertz, Bernd Arne Degard. Lectures on Corporate Finance. World Scientific. ISBN 978-981-256-899-1, Richard Brealey, Stuart Myers, Franklin Allen. Principles of Corporate Finance. McGraw-Hill ISBN 978-0078034763, Aswith de Modern Corporate Finance, Theory and Practice Wiley ISBN 978-0471076803, Jao Amaro de Matos Theoretical Foundations of Corporate Finance Princeton University Press ISBN 9780691087948 Joseph Ogden, Frank C. Jen, Philip F. O'Connor Advanced Corporate Finance Prentice Hall ISBN 978-0130915689, Pascal Quiry, Yan L. E. Fur, Antonio Salvi, Maurizio Dallocchio, Pierre Vernemin. Corporate Finance, Theory and Practice. Wiley. ISBN 978-1119975588. Stephen Ross. Randolph Westerfield, Jeffrey Jaff Corporate Finance McGraw-Hill ISBN 007-803-4779 CS1 maint, Multiple Names, Authors List, Joel M. Stern, ed. The Revolution in Corporate Finance Wiley Blackwell ISBN 9781405107815 CS1 maint, Extra Text, Authors List, Jean Tyroli The Theory of Corporate Finance Princeton University Press ISBN 0691125562, Iva Welch Corporate Finance ISBN 978-0-9840049-1-1 Resultant Models Certainty Uncertainty Extensions Portfolio Theory With this measure in place, the expected, i.e. required, return of any security will then equal the riskless return, plus an adjustment for risk, i.e. a security-specific risk premium, compensating for the extent to which its cash flows are unpredictable. All pricing models are then essentially variants of this, given specific assumptions and slash or conditions. This approach is consistent with the above but with the expectation based on the market as opposed to individual preferences. Miller Merton H. The History of Finance, an Eyewitness Account. Journal of Applied Corporate Finance. 13, 814. slash j1745 66022.2000.tb00050.x, Great Moments in Financial Economics I, 2, 3, Eva, IVB. Mark Rubinstein, The Scientific Evolution of Finance. Don Chance and Pamela Peterson, The Theory of Corporate Finance. A Historical Overview, 
Michael C. Jensen and Clifford W. Smith, A Stylized History of Quantitative Finance, Emmanuel Derman, Financial Engineering, Some Tools of the Trade. CH10 in Philem Boyle and Fade Lim Boyle. Derivatives, The Tools That Changed Finance. What We Do Know, The Seven Most Important Ideas in Finance, What We Do Not Know. 10 Unsolved Problems in Finance, Richard A. Brealey, Stuart Myers, and Franklin Allen, An Overview of Modern Financial Economics. Chi Fu Huang Thus, continuing the example, to value a specific security, its forecasted cash flows in the up and down states are multiplied through by P and respectively, and are then discounted at the risk-free interest rate plus an appropriate premium. In general, this premium may be derived by the CAPM as will be seen under number uncertainty. Microfoundations of Financial Economics Professor Andre Farber, Salve Business School, An Introduction to Investment Theory, Professor William Goetzmann, Yale School of Management, Macro Investment Analysis Professor William F. Sharp, Stanford Graduate School of Business, Finance Theory Professor Andrew Lowe, MIT, Financial Theory Professor John Giannakolos, Yale University, The Theory of Investment at the Wayback Machine Professor G. L. Fonseca New School for Social Research, Introduction to Financial Economics Gordon Zitkovi, University of Texas at Austin, An Introduction to Asset Pricing Theory, Jun Huichian, Shanghai Jiao Tong University With the above relationship established, the further specialized Aero de Bru model may be derived. This important result suggests that under certain economic conditions, there must be a set of prices such that aggregate supplies will equal aggregate demands for every commodity in the economy. The analysis here is often undertaken assuming a representative agent. Gel Classification Codes Guide, Financial Economics Links on AEA's RFE, SSRN Financial Economics Network Financial Economics Listings on EconomicsNetwork.ACUK, Financial Economists Roundtable, Financial Economics Resources on Finance, Financial Economics Links on WebEC. Derivative Pricing The Aero de Bru model applies to economies with maximally complete markets in which there exists a market for every time period and forward prices for every commodity at all time periods. A direct extension, then, is the concept of a state price security, a contract that agrees to pay one unit of a numerator if a particular state occurs at a particular time in the future and pays zero numerator in all the other states. The price of this security is the state price of this particular state of the world. In the above example, the state prices would equate to the present values of dollar $P and dollar, i.e. what one would pay today, respectively, for the up and down state securities, the state price vector is the vector of state prices for all states. Applied to valuation the price of the derivative today would simply be, see below regarding the absence of any risk premium here. For a continuous random variable indicating a continuum of possible states, the value is found by integrating over the state price density, see stochastic discount factor. These concepts are extended to martingale pricing and the related risk neutral measure. State prices find immediate application as a conceptual tool, but can also be applied to valuation problems. Given the pricing mechanism described, one can decompose the derivative value as a linear combination of its state prices, 
i.e. back solve for the state prices corresponding to observed derivative prices. These recovered state prices can then be used for valuation of other instruments with exposure to the underlier, or for other decision making relating to the underlier itself. Established the use of state prices in financial economics. Applying the preceding economic concepts, we may then derive various economic and financial models and principles. As above, the two usual areas of focus are asset pricing and corporate finance, the first being the perspective of providers of capital, the second of users of capital. Here, and for all other financial economics models, the questions addressed are typically framed in terms of time, uncertainty, options, and information, as will be seen below. Applying this framework, with the above concepts, leads to the required models. This derivation begins with the assumption of no uncertainty and is then expanded to incorporate the other considerations. Or stochastic dot. The starting point here is investment under certainty. The Fisher separation theorem asserts that the objective of a corporation will be the maximization of its present value regardless of the preferences of its shareholders. Related is the Modigliani-Miller theorem, which shows that, under certain conditions, the value of a firm is unaffected by how that firm is financed, and depends neither on its dividend policy nor its decision to raise capital by issuing stock or selling debt. The proof here proceeds using arbitrage arguments, and acts as a benchmark for evaluating the effects of factors outside the model that do affect value. The mechanism for determining value is provided by the theory of investment value, which proposes that the value of an asset should be calculated using evaluation by the rule of present worth. Thus, for a common stock, the intrinsic, Long-term worth is the present value of its future net cash flows, in the form of dividends. What remains to be determined is the appropriate discount rate. Later developments show that, rationally, i.e. in the formal sense, the appropriate discount rate here will depend on the asset's riskiness relative to the overall market, as opposed to its owner's preferences, see below. Net present value, a direct extension of these ideas, was first formally applied to corporate finance decisioning by Joel Dean in 1951. Corporate Finance Theory Bond valuation, in that cash flows are deterministic, may proceed in the same fashion. An immediate extension, arbitrage-free bond pricing discounts each cash flow at the market-derived rate i.e. at each coupon's corresponding zero rate as opposed to an overall rate. Note that in many treatments bond valuation precedes equity valuation, under which cash flows are not known per SC. Williams and Onward allow for forecasting as to these based on historic ratios or published policy and cash flows are then treated as essentially deterministic. See below under number corporate finance theory. These certainty results are all commonly employed under corporate finance. Uncertainty is the focus of asset pricing models, as follows. Models for financial economics, Society of Actuaries, Financial Economics Institute and Faculty of Actuaries, A Primer in Financial Economics. S. F. Wellen, D. C. Bowie and A. J. Hibbert British Actuarial Journal, Volume 8, Issue 1, April 2002, pages 2765, Pension Actuary's Guide to Financial Economics Gordon Enderl, Jeremy Gold, Gordon Ladder, and Michael Peskin Society of Actuaries and American Academy of Actuaries Challenges and Criticism 
therefore a choice under uncertainty the twin assumptions of rationality and market efficiency, as more closely defined, lead to modern portfolio theory with its capital asset pricing model and equilibrium-based result and to the Black-Scholes-Merton theory for option pricing and arbitrage-free result. Briefly, and intuitively, and consistent with number arbitrage-free pricing and equilibrium above the linkage is as follows. Given the ability to profit from private information, self-interested traders are motivated to acquire and act on their private information. In doing so, traders contribute to more and more correct, i.e. efficient, prices, the efficient market hypothesis or IMHA. The IMHA assumes that average expectations constitute an optimal forecast, i.e. prices using all available information, are identical to the best guess of the future, the assumption of rational expectations. The IMHA does allow that when faced with new information, some investors may overreact and some may underreact, but what is required, however, is that investors' reactions follow a normal distribution so that the net effect on market prices cannot be reliably exploited to make an abnormal profit. In the competitive limit, then, market prices will reflect all available information and prices can only move in response to news, and this, of course, could be good or bad, major or minor, the random walk hypothesis. Thus. If prices of financial assets are efficient, then deviations from these values could not last for long. Departures from normality Departures from rationality Under these conditions investors can then be assumed to act rationally, their investment decision must be calculated or a loss is sure to follow, correspondingly where an arbitrage opportunity presents itself, then arbitrageurs will exploit it, reinforcing this equilibrium. Here, as under the certainty case above, the specific assumption as to pricing is that prices are calculated as the present value of expected future dividends, as based on currently available information. What is required though is a theory for determining the appropriate discount rate given this uncertainty, this is provided by the MPT and its CAPM. Relatedly, rationality in the sense of arbitrage exploitation gives rise to black shoals, option values here ultimately consistent with the CAPM. In general, then, while portfolio theory studies how investors should balance risk and return when investing in many assets or securities, the CAPM is more focused, describing how, in equilibrium, markets set the prices of assets in relation to how risky they are. Importantly, this result will be independent of the investor's level of risk aversion, and slash or assumed utility function thus providing a readily determined discount rate for corporate finance decision makers as above, and for other investors. The argument proceeds as follows, if one can construct an efficient frontier i.e. each combination of assets offering the best possible expected level of return for its level of risk, see diagram then mean variance efficient portfolios can be formed simply as a combination of holdings of the risk-free asset and the market portfolio with the combinations here plotting as the capital market line or cml then given this cml the required return on risky securities will be independent of the investors utility function and solely determined by their covariance with aggregate i.e. market, risk. This is because investors here can then maximize utility through leverage as opposed to pricing, CCML diagram. As can be seen in the formula aside, this result is consistent with the preceding, equaling the riskless return plus an adjustment for risk, William F. Sharp, John Lintner, and Jan Mawson independently. 
Black-Scholes provides a mathematical model of a financial market containing derivative instruments, and the resultant formula for the price of European-styled options. The model is expressed as the Black-Scholes equation, a partial differential equation describing the changing price of the option over time, it is derived assuming log normal, geometric Brownian motion. The key financial insight behind the model is that one can perfectly hedge the option by buying and selling the underlying asset in just the right way and consequently eliminate risk, absenting the risk adjustment from the pricing, v, the value, or price, of the option, grows at, r, the risk-free rate, see Black-Scholes equation financial interpretation. This hedge in turn, implies that there is only one right price in an arbitrage-free sense for the option. And this price is returned by the Black-Scholes option pricing formula. Since the formula is without reference to the share's expected return, Black-Scholes entails risk neutrality, consistent with the elimination of risk here. Relatedly, therefore, the pricing formula may also be derived directly via risk-neutral expectation. Although these were more actuarial in flavor, and had not established risk-neutral discounting. See also Paul Samuelson. As mentioned, it can be shown that the two models are consistent, then, as is to be expected, classical financial economics is thus unified. Here, the Black-Scholes equation may alternatively be derived from the CAPM, and the price obtained from the Black-Scholes model is thus consistent with the expected return from the CAPM. The Black-Scholes theory, although built on arbitrage-free pricing, is therefore consistent with the equilibrium-based capital asset pricing. Both models, in turn, are ultimately consistent with the Aero de Brew theory, and may be derived via state pricing, further explaining, and if required demonstrating, this unity. More recent work further generalizes and slash or extends these models. As regards asset pricing, developments in equilibrium-based pricing are discussed under portfolio theory below while derivative pricing relates to risk-neutral, i.e. arbitrage-free, pricing. As regards the use of capital, corporate finance theory relates, mainly, to the application of these models to situations of uncertainty. The majority of developments here relate to required return, extending the basic CAPM. Multi-factor models such as the Fama French three-factor model and the Carhart four-factor model, propose factors other than market return as relevant in pricing. The intertemporal CAPM and consumption-based CAPM similarly extend the model. With intertemporal portfolio choice, the investor now repeatedly optimizes her portfolio while the inclusion of consumption then incorporates all sources of wealth, and not just market-based investments, into the investor's calculation of required return. Whereas the above extend the CAPM, the single index model is a more simple model. It assumes, only, a correlation between security and market returns, without other economic assumptions. It is useful in that it simplifies the estimation of correlation between securities, significantly reducing the inputs for building the correlation matrix required for portfolio optimization. The arbitrage pricing theory similarly differs as regards its assumptions. APT gives up the notion that there is one right portfolio for everyone in the world, A and D replaces it with an explanatory model of what drives asset returns. It returns the required return of a financial asset as a linear function of various macroeconomic factors, and assumes that arbitrage should bring incorrectly priced assets back into line.
As regards portfolio optimization, the Black Litterman model departs from the original Markowitz approach of constructing portfolios via an efficient frontier. Black Litterman instead starts with an equilibrium assumption, and is then modified to take into account the views of the investor in question to arrive at a bespoke asset allocation. Where factors additional to volatility are considered then multiple criteria decision analysis can be applied, here deriving a Pareto efficient portfolio. The universal portfolio algorithm applies machine learning to asset selection, learning adaptively from historical data. Behavioral portfolio theory recognizes that investors have varied aims and create an investment portfolio that meets a broad range of goals. Copulas have lately been applied here. See Portfolio Optimization Improving Portfolio Optimization for other techniques and slash or objectives. As regards derivative pricing, the binomial options pricing model provides a discretized version of Black-Scholes, useful for the valuation of American-styled options. Discretized models of this type are built at least implicitly using state prices, relatedly, a large number of researchers have used options to extract state prices for a variety of other applications in financial economics. For path-dependent derivatives, Monte Carlo methods for option pricing are employed, here the modeling is in continuous time, but similarly uses risk-neutral expected value. Various other numeric techniques have also been developed. The theoretical framework too has been extended such that martingale pricing is now the standard approach. Developments relating to complexities in return and slash or volatility are discussed below. Drawing on these techniques, derivative models for various other underlyings and applications have also been developed, all based off the same logic. Real options valuation allows that option holders can influence the options underlying, models for employee stock option valuation explicitly assume non-rationality on the part of option holders. Credit derivatives allow that payment obligations and slash or delivery requirements might not be honored. Exotic derivatives are now routinely valued. Multi-asset underliers are handled via simulation or copula-based analysis. Similarly, beginning with Oldrich Vosicek, various short-rate models, as well as the HJM and BGM forward-rate-based techniques, allow for an extension of these to fixed income and interest rate derivatives. Bond valuation is relatedly extended, the stochastic calculus approach, employing these methods, allows for rates that are random, lattice models for hybrid securities allow for non-deterministic cash flows. As above, derivative pricing has relied on the BSM risk-neutral pricing framework under the assumptions of funding at the risk-free rate and the ability to perfectly replicate cash flows so as to fully hedge. This, in turn, is built on the assumption of a credit risk-free environment. Post the financial crisis of 2008, therefore, issues such as counterparty credit risk, funding costs and costs of capital are additionally considered and a credit valuation adjustment, or CVA, and potentially other valuation adjustments, collectively XVA is generally added to the risk-neutral derivative value. A related, and perhaps more fundamental change, is that discounting is now on the overnight index swap curve, as opposed to LIBOR as used previously. This is because post-crisis, OIS is considered a better proxy for the risk-free rate. Swap pricing is then similarly modified, previously, swaps were valued off a single self-discounting interest rate curve, whereas post-crisis, to accommodate OIS discounting, 
valuation is now under a multi-curve framework where forecast curves are constructed for each floating leg LIBOR tenor, see interest rate swap valuation and pricing. Corporate finance theory has also been extended, mirroring the above developments, asset valuation and decisioning no longer need assume certainty. As discussed, Monte Carlo methods in finance, introduced by David B. Hertz in 1964, allow financial analysts to construct stochastic or probabilistic corporate finance models, as opposed to the traditional static and deterministic models, see corporate finance quantifying uncertainty. Relatedly, Real options theory allows for owner i.e. managerial actions that impact underlying value, by incorporating option pricing logic, these actions are then applied to a distribution of future outcomes, changing with time, which then determine the project's valuation today. More traditionally, decision trees which are complementary have been used to evaluate projects, by incorporating in the valuation possible events and consequent management decisions, the correct discount rate here reflecting each point's non-diversifiable risk looking forward. It is borrowed from operations research, and is not a financial economics development per SC. Related to this, is the treatment of forecasted cash flows in equity valuation. In many cases, Following Williams above, the average cash flows were discounted, as opposed to a more correct state-by-state -state treatment under uncertainty, see comments under financial modeling accounting. In more modern treatments, then, it is the expected cash flows combined into an overall value per forecast period which are discounted. And using the CAPM or extensions the discounting here is at the risk-free rate plus a premium linked to the uncertainty of the entity or project cash flows. Other extensions here include agency theory, which analyzes the difficulties in motivating corporate management to act in the best interests of shareholders, rather than in their own interests. Clean surplus accounting and the related residual income valuation provide a model that returns price as a function of earnings, expected returns, and change in book value, as opposed to dividends. This approach, to some extent, arises due to the implicit contradiction of seeing value as a function of dividends, while also holding that dividend policy cannot influence value per Modigliani and Miller's irrelevance principle, see dividend policy irrelevance of dividend policy. The typical application of real options is to capital budgeting type problems as described. However, they are also applied to questions of capital structure and dividend policy, and to the related design of corporate securities and since stockholder and bondholders have different objective functions, in the analysis of the related agency problems. In all of these cases, state prices can provide the market implied information relating to the corporate, as above, which is then applied to the analysis. For example, convertible bonds can be priced consistent with the state prices of the corporate's equity. As above, there is a very close link between the random walk hypothesis, with the associated expectation that price changes should follow a normal distribution, on the one hand, and market efficiency and rational expectations, on the other. Note, however, that departures from these are commonly observed, and there are thus, respectively, two main sets of challenges. As discussed, the assumptions that market prices follow a random walk and slash or that asset returns are normally distributed are fundamental. Empirical evidence, however, suggests that these assumptions may not hold and that in practice, traders, analysts, and risk managers frequently modify the standard models. In fact, 
Benoit Mandelbrot had discovered already in the 1960s that changes in financial prices do not follow a Gaussian distribution, the basis for much option pricing theory, although this observation was slow to find its way into mainstream financial economics. Financial models with long-tailed distributions and volatility clustering have been introduced to overcome problems with the realism of the above classical financial models, while jump diffusion models allow for pricing incorporating jumps in the spot price. Risk managers, similarly, complement the standard value at risk models with historical simulations, mixture models, principal component analysis, extreme value theory, as well as models for volatility clustering. For further discussion see fat-tailed distribution applications in economics, and value at risk criticism. Closely related is the volatility smile, where implied volatility the volatility corresponding to the BSM price is observed to differ as a function of strike price true only if the price change distribution is non-normal, unlike that assumed by BSM. The term structure of volatility describes how volatility differs for related options with different maturities. An implied volatility surface is then a three-dimensional surface plot of volatility smile and term structure. These empirical phenomena negate the assumption of constant volatility and log normality upon which Black-Scholes is built, see Black-Scholes model the volatility smile. In consequence traders use smile consistent models, firstly, when valuing derivatives not directly mapped to the surface, facilitating the pricing of other, i.e. non-quoted, strike-slash-maturity combinations or of non-European derivatives, and generally for hedging purposes. The two main approaches are local volatility and stochastic volatility. The first returns the volatility which is local to each spot time point of the finite difference or simulation-based valuation. In this way calculated prices and numeric structures are market consistent in an arbitrage-free sense. The second approach assumes that the volatility of the underlying price is a stochastic process rather than a constant. Models here are first calibrated to observed prices, and are then applied to the valuation in question, the most common are Heston, SABR and CEV. This approach addresses certain problems identified with hedging under local volatility. Related to local volatility are the lattice-based implied binomial and trinomial trees essentially a discretization of the approach which are similarly used for pricing, these are built on state prices recovered from the surface. Edgeworth binomial trees allow for a specified skew and kurtosis in the spot price, priced here, options with differing strikes will return differing implied volatilities and the tree can be calibrated to the smile as required. Similarly purposed closed form models include, Jero and Rudd, Corrado and Su, Bacchus, Forsey and Wu. As above, additional to log normality in returns, BSM and, typically, other derivative models assume the ability to perfectly replicate cash flows so as to fully hedge and hence to discount at the risk-free rate. This, in turn, is built on the assumption of a credit risk-free environment. Post-crisis, then, various x-value adjustments are made to the risk-neutral derivative value. Note that these are additional to any smile or surface effect, this is valid as the surface is built on price data relating to fully collateralized positions and there is therefore no double counting of credit risk when including XVA. As seen, a common assumption is that financial decision makers act rationally, see Homo economicus. Recently, however, researchers in experimental economics and experimental finance have challenged this assumption empirically. 
These assumptions are also challenged theoretically, by behavioral finance, a discipline primarily concerned with the limits to rationality of economic agents. Consistent with, and complementary to these findings, various persistent market anomalies have been documented, these being price and slash or return distortions e.g. size premiums which appear to contradict the efficient market hypothesis, calendar effects are the best known group here. Related to these are various of the economic puzzles, concerning phenomena similarly contradicting the theory. The equity premium puzzle, as one example, arises in that the difference between the observed returns on stocks as compared to government bonds is consistently higher than the risk premium rational equity investors should demand, an abnormal return. For further context see random walk hypothesis and non-random walk hypothesis, and sidebar for specific instances. More generally, and particularly following the financial crisis of 2007-2010, financial economics and mathematical finance have been subjected to deeper criticism, notable here is Nassim Nicholas Taleb, who claims that the prices of financial assets cannot be characterized by the simple models currently in use, rendering much of current practice at best irrelevant, and, at worst, Dangerously misleading, see Black Swan Theory, Taleb Distribution. A topic of general interest studied in recent years has thus been financial crises, and the failure of financial economics to model these. Areas of research attempting to explain these phenomena, and crises, include noise trading, market microstructure, and heterogeneous agent models. The latter is extended to agent-based computational economics, where price is treated as an emergent phenomenon, resulting from the interaction of the various market participants. The noisy market hypothesis argues that prices can be influenced by speculators and momentum traders, as well as by insiders and institutions that often buy and sell stocks for reasons unrelated to fundamental value see noise. The adaptive market hypothesis is an attempt to reconcile the efficient market hypothesis with behavioral economics, by applying the principles of evolution to financial interactions. An information cascade, alternatively, shows market participants engaging in the same acts as others, despite contradictions with their private information. Copula-based modeling has similarly been applied. See also Hyman Minsky S. Financial Instability Hypothesis, as well as George Soros' approach, reflexivity, financial markets, and economic theory. On the obverse, however, various studies have shown that despite these departures from efficiency, Asset prices do typically exhibit a random walk and that one cannot therefore consistently outperform market averages. The practical implication, therefore, is that passive investing should, on average, serve better than any other active strategy. Burton Malkiel S. A. Random Walk Down Wall Street first published in 1973 and in its 11th edition as of 2015 is a widely read popularization of these arguments. Note also that institutionally inherent limits to arbitrage as opposed to factors directly contradictory to the theory are sometimes proposed as an explanation for these departures from efficiency. Financial Economics Asset Pricing Corporate Finance Surveys Course material Links and portals Actuarial resources Bibliography